All right. Uh, I'm Jesse Janowak. I'm a developer, uh, but I'll, I'll be showing some code. I hope not to get too technical because this is a really talk about one of my favorite plugins for WordPress, and it's um, it, I, I'm focusing on the why of this plugin more than the how. So, uh, how many of you um, develop either you or in your team custom templates for post types or pages? Okay, good, a fair number of you. Because that's really who Timber is for. Uh, Timber is really great for small dev teams, like at colleges and schools often have. Uh, and at New City, which is where I work, it's an, we're an agency that specializes in higher ed clients, it's completely changed our workflow for WordPress because we build custom templates all the time. That's pretty much all we do with WordPress for clients. Uh, but in many web projects where you only have like one WordPress developer, maybe two, uh, but you would like to add more people to your team, you might not have the budget to hire yet another experienced WordPress de developer or to hire a less experienced developer and train them up. Uh, and WordPress doesn't really help with that in some ways because your PHP code and your front end HTML code, they're all blended together in the same file. Uh, which means that even if you get somebody who's really good at HTML, they don't know what they're looking at when they open up a PHP file. When I started at New City, I was not experienced with WordPress. I was a front-end developer. And they said they needed me to build WordPress templates. And I said, okay, sure. I may have no experience with WordPress, but I know front-end and a template should just be HTML with holes in it for content, right? <laughs> uh, and then I looked at my first WordPress template. Uh, that's crazy if you've never seen it before. Uh, things like echo statements inside of hrefs, it, it's, it just blew my mind. And it's not badly written code. That's normal. That's taken from the 2017 theme right there. Uh, so uh, I eventually learned it, but it did take me a while. And not everybody has the budget to spend on somebody taking a while to learn that. So it doesn't have to be this way if we could split the PHP from the HTML then our PHP and WordPress specialists could focus on what they're good at, and our front-end specialists could focus on what they're good at, and they could work at the same time as each other, which also saves time. Um, so Timber is designed to solve this problem by splitting what would normally be a single uh, template file into two files that I'm calling the controller uh, file and the view file, named loosely after the control, uh, control, model view controller paradigm of programming. It's loose, so if that's something you take seriously, I hope I don't offend you. But uh, the, the controller file is where all of your PHP and WordPress API information lives, all of your functions. And then the view file is where your HTML is going to live in uh, a format that people who understand HTML can actually read. Um, this has the advantage of um, uh, the advantages I mentioned before, and also it means that your front-end people don't need to poke around in potentially dangerous code. They're not going to break the site if all they touch is your view files. So here's an example of what a, uh, a it's a snippet of a view file from a, a Timber template. Uh, it's written in a language called Twig, which is, uh, if you've ever used Mustache, it's, it's similar to that, but they're both, those are templating languages where you start with HTML, and then you put variables in using the, that curly brace syntax that then retrieves information from somewhere else. In the case of Timber, Timber is grabbing all of the information from a post and taking some of the most useful and, and often used fields and attributes and giving them names like that that you can use in your Twig files. Uh, there's a whole list of them and almost anything you can think of is covered. And this, if you've seen the PHP code, like that's that there post.title is equivalent to that PHP code, uh, which is a lot more concise and easy to read and harder to break. So uh, this is the controller file, and I won't get too much into the weeds for people who don't know PHP, but essentially what it's doing is those first three lines are grabbing the WordPress post uh, and assigning values to, uh, sorry, variable names to the values stored in that post that can be used in the view file. 
And then that second part there that starts with timber render tells the controller which template file goes with this type of post. So this is a single post template. All WordPress themes have that. And this is the, the <laughs> simplest version of a, of a PHP controller file for timber that you can have. Uh, it gets, you can add complexity from there, but you don't have to. That alone would be enough to give you your basics. Oh, and my notes went to sleep. Okay, so just to get a little higher level, more visual representation of what's going on, uh, here's a walkthrough of how a single field, in this case, the title of a post, kind of traverses through the Timber plugin and ends up on your page. So nothing changes in the content editor. You just type in the title and, and submit it to the database as normal. It gets passed to your controller file, which bundles it up and assigns variables to the fields and some, not all fields, also attributes like the date it was posted, that sort of thing. Uh, you call that variable inside your HTML in your view file, and then it gets compiled. I left out a step that's behind the scenes where it gets compiled down to PHP, just straight PHP, which is then processed like any other PHP page would be to, uh, to the browser. So, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought because I skipped ahead. Okay, so uh, I, that's a little bit technical. Let's focus a bit more on how this would help your team. If uh, you haven't already put it together, how it might help you specifically. Imagine that your team is like the example I mentioned at the beginning, where you've only got one WordPress developer. Uh, hard to imagine, right? I'm sure that never happens. <laughs> uh, but you'd like to expand it. You don't have a big budget, so you think, oh, maybe students on the work-study program. Uh, you can probably find students who know HTML, either as a hobby or maybe they're studying web development at the, the college that you're working at, something like that. Um, but maybe they're not that experienced. They're baby ninjas. Um, by, by splitting uh, your content, I mean rather your templates, into your front end and your back end, you can, like I said with the earlier slides, you can let your uh, main full-time dev person build the features of the site and then you can give your baby devs the free reign over the, the front-end templates without risking them screwing up your site and with a minimum of extra training they just need to learn a little bit of extra syntax to know how to use the twig uh, language and then when they inevitably graduate or move on to a different job you don't have to go through that whole process of training them up and learning PHP again. You, you've got a pretty good pool of talent that you can draw from compared to when you needed somebody who already knew WordPress. Um, so, well, I must have talked fast. <laughs> um, so separating controller code from front end code is great, and Timber is the best way I've ever seen for accomplishing it in WordPress. Uh, if that's the environment you work in, I think you'll love it. You should try it. It's free. Uh, so th that brings me to uh, my closing, which is if you want to know more about the how of Timber rather than the why of Timber, uh, we're going to be on the New City website posting a series of tutorials. So you can follow me at Wonky the Monkey or New City, which is New City, note the one instead of an I and uh, we will post when those go live. It should be sometime this month, at least the first installment should be sometime this month. And we have other resources on other web development and uh, design and governance related things on our blog. Uh, below that are resources for learning more about Timber from the official source. And if you would like to review my talk, then the link for that is at the top. Thank you. The question was, can you use Timber and Twig inside a plugin? Um, could you be a, a little more specific? Because I'm not sure what you mean by inside a plugin. Well, 
Well, sorry. What I mean is that in, I had a project of, I, I had a um, template for you for this project. I mean, I wrapped it up in quite a pleasant way. Um, it sounds like you need to tell me a plugin to make it work and to, to start with. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Right. Um, okay, so let me recap that as best I can. So you've written a custom plugin to handle some of your um, your code reuse needs, I suppose. Uh, uh, and you're wondering, uh, and you said, first of all, you asked if you need a plugin for Twig and Timber. And yes, it's, it, the Timber is a plugin that, come, that installs a library um, that handles all of this stuff. It's very compatible with most plugins that I have used with it. Uh, in that um, most plugins are generating PHP that some, somehow ends up in your page. Uh, it gets injected at some point in the WordPress rendering process. Uh, and that WordPress rendering process is not significantly altered by Timber. The only part that's changed is when it, it kind of takes the content and sticks it into the HTML. But if you have something that inserts a short code or that operates on a short code or that um, that injects something into the header, it, all of that would be unaffected. Yes. I just I muted Timber and Twig, but I just quickly looked up. So basically, you create a template, and it's Timber has a theme. Uh, Timber has a starter theme. Yeah. You don't have to use it, but it would. It would not be a good idea not to, especially your first time. Well, what I was wondering is, could you use use the timber twig thing to create a an additional template and make that a child theme of some other standard theme? So we've got you know a theme that comes with its own page templates, but then you know we've got some HTML designer that oh I really wish that we could do this, kind of like our designers did, and you know they'd have a way to. Do that if we don't have this and I don't have to worry about them. okay so the question is if you aren't starting with the timber default theme if you're starting from an existing theme and you want to yeah. su supplement it with uh, timber and twig templates uh, to add additional con content types or additional right. templates can you do that uh, I have not done that but in theory you should be able to because the controller file that I mentioned stands in for an ordinary template PHP file. So if you had a template that was okay. called like single person .php, that would be a typical way of creating a, um, a post custom post type template for person uh, custom post type. Uh, you could, instead of putting your typical template code in that file, put your timber code, like the demo that I showed, and that becomes a timber template as opposed to a regular template. It should work. I've not tried it, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Yes? Thanks for that. I'm going to go back to uh, there wasn't time for questions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't mean to monopolize. No, no, no. I, well, I just have to use the book. I just had a question about um, what the mobile experience might be like for the textbooks, uh, if that is something that... It was a consideration, really yeah. We hired an external uh, graphic designer, and uh, he was uh, very much concerned with that. But um, faculty members tend to discourage uh, mobile use of it, um, not just for this, but for other projects as well. I think just because they don't want their teaching content on a, on a little screen. And they don't want doing them doing it their homework while they're walking across campus. Because um, uh, it came to my mind because I don't know what the flashcards might be. Actually. It does work well on yeah, yeah. It does work well. Yeah, I have a question for them. Um, actually, kind of a two-part question. One is, um, what was the rationale? You said it's not OER, so I presume there's no CC license or any open source license. Yes, right. Um, in, in fact. Um, Copyright was one of the reasons for, this is all backwards, um, for locking it down. Uh, they very much wanted to use copyrighted material and not worry about copyright. So, um, at the front end of it, of course, so, so we had to purchase yeah. images for it, things like that. But in the back end, after someone's logged in. Have you considered 
Patrick in the draw center for winning the West Coast as a player at his job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least detailing in the article, if not open sourcing, say, yeah, the Absolutely. structure, the code of it, yeah. so that we could do our own text, our own. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that, that without basic, just no content. That basic function of repopulating uh, exercise fields, response fields on a page has so many different uses, not just the text. Oh, God, yes. I, uh, that, that, I think yeah. if I rendered it down to a simpler form, uh, would make an excellent open source project. Oh yeah, and if you can do that, I will owe you endless years. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that the text is not there in Can you is it available for free? It is. Yeah. It that's right. That's right. Um, and that's that was a deep uh, a real question. Whether the students would value a resource as much if they didn't pay for it, right? That's again, it turns things on its head a little bit. But um, it seems the feedback we put a feedback form on the bottom of every single page this year because it was the first year that it was offered, um, and students certainly provided feedback, um, and they really liked it, and um, they loved the fact it was free. Let's say that. Do you, what was some of the negative, like what were, what was something that you said, oh, we didn't think of that, or oh, we can fix that kind of thing? Um, well, I, at the beginning of the year, I had problems saving the responses, so they weren't okay. able to complete their homework. Oh, no. <laughs> so that, that was, oh, no. That was the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing. I mean, it's always a rocky road. Do you require a certain browser code? No, no, that's it all over the place. I have a question about Twig. If oh. we can, <laughs> yeah. we don't mind a let me get closer thing. to the microphone. I'm wondering about the non-post object parts of the page. Is, uh, there's other commands in there, such as get sidebar and get footer and things like that. That are, do those remain the same? You are referring to a part of my talk that I cut for time. Um, well, now you have. It one. looks like that. Uh, you, you can create new um, variables within the post object in the controller file. So if you have a WordPress function that you want to get the results from and pass through to your controller, using a variation on what I'm showing on the screen, you can uh, assign a new variable and call that. In this case, I've taken an ex like this is Git has ancestors, which is one I use a lot to build breadcrumbs, but um, it returns an array by default, so that's the only change I've made from the default is I've converted to a string first, just for demo purposes, so that you could just drop it in like that. Thanks for asking. Right. <laughs> yes. Question, but if you have custom post types or custom taxonomies that you've done for another program or how hard is it to incorporate them? Is it automatically find them? Uh, that's a complicated question. Um, it kind of varies from case to case. She's asking about custom post types and custom taxonomies being oh, and meta fields. And meta fields be, oh, meta fields it handles great. Um, custom fields. I use advanced custom fields for every site that I do, and those fields automatically become variables based on the field name that you assign them. Uh, it's uh, amazing. Uh, taxonomies. It kind of depends on how they're set up. They. The short answer is yes, you can use them, uh, but you'll have to read through the docs to figure out in your specific uh, case how you would do that. Folks, uh, please, please remember to session survey on the session page or on paper if you prefer, uh, just because that's really helpful. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.